Here we go. Great. So thank you for being here, for being present to this uh, afternoon with Jump Academy professional training with this series of webinar that had a great success starting from last December. So we absolutely decided to continue and we on this uh, January and there will be also a uh, meeting in uh, February. As you like could see you, in the email that probably you received thanks to which you are here today, this series of webinar is dedicated to the innovation in education. So as a um, training center dedicated to international teachers and educators, we are always uh, interested to research and to diffuse what is the state of the art of education um, in Europe, in, in our schools, in our training centers. And um, what are the innovative methodologies that we can see that are working um, and being successful during our trainings? This is what we really want to share with you. And that's why we have today two amazing trainers. The first one is um, Ashley Miller. She's from USA and she will uh, speak with us about the topic, the complex topic of business English. And in a couple of minutes, I will give her the floor. And later on, we are going to speak with our trainer, Roberta Muratore. She will uh, introduce us to the topic of teaching Europe, which is a um, training course that JUMP created to go deeper to the topic like European Union, its function and new priorities towards 2030. And we can see among the participants some faces uh, that we know because there are some uh, there are some people who are connected who are teachers who participated to our training in presence. And for those of you who don't know where are the headquarters of Jump Training Academy. They are in a marvelous place, the um, sunny region of Calabria in the south of Italy. The name of the city is Soverato. And later on during this webinar, we will take the opportunity to say something about the location and all the cultural um, uh, opportunities and discovery that also is part of, of the training. And the, we will also have some interaction with these um, teachers who already attended the training courses, because for us, they are like jump ambassadors. They are um, um, important uh, people who already came, um, with whom we are in contact to, uh, to know what is their feedback after the training. How could they apply everything that we shared in their reality, in their school, in their life. So, uh, last thing before starting with our first trainer, I want to remind all of you that the topics we are talking um, today about are part of trainings that are opportunities for every school in Europe, because every a school in European Union can apply to Erasmus Plus funds and um, get the fund to participate for free to this kind of trainings, which are funded by Key Action One of Erasmus Plus. So if your school is already uh, writing a project perfect, uh, um, otherwise um, co speak with the, the team uh, in your school that is in charge of um, the design of projects because the next deadline is uh, coming soon. The next deadline uh, is on 20th of February. So there is uh, one month and some more days uh, to apply. And later on, we will give you some details to find also information about this training academy. So uh, this is also an opportunity for you to introduce these trainings in your um, project when you design it and to have some inspiration and uh, concrete details that can be useful for you. So let's start with our first trainer. She comes from United States, as I already mentioned, and uh, at the moment she's um, 
one of the trainer uh, part of the pool of professional trainer and experts of Jump Training Academy. So she lives in, uh, in Calabria uh, at the moment. And I give the floor to Ashe Rene Miller to introduce the first topic of this afternoon. Thank you, Ashley, for being here. Thank you, Alessia, and thank you for the introduction. I was going to do that myself, but you did such a wonderful job that I don't have to reintroduce myself other than to say welcome, everyone. As Alessia said, I'm Ashley, and I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah in America, and I've lived in Calabria for one year on February 1st, which is kind of hard to believe, but we're coming from you from Silverato. So thank you everyone for being here. I see there's quite a few people. I look forward to meeting you guys over these webinars and hopefully in person one day here in Silverato. So I'm going to be speaking about the topic business English, yeah. which I'm in the process of teaching at the school okay. right now. We're in- Sorry, uh, we are in the week seven of a course and it's going very well. I'm teaching some local Calabrian engineers here. And the focus is to really integrate business but also integrate English every step of the way. So when you come to this course, as you are greeted by me and Pietro and Erica and Roberta, you're asked to just speak English. So, which is very hard here in Italy, especially Silverato, but it's very fun to see the, the effort that's put in, in just speaking the language and being able to connect with others. So it's a business English course and it's integrating language with business and it's to improve technical business language proficiency and then to also empower business relationships. And then obviously we are not based in the UK or America, so it may seem strange to come to learn business English in Southern Italy of all places, Calabria, but our team does have native speakers, myself from the US, as well as Catherine from Australia. I'm not sure if she's on today or not, but she runs one of the webinars this week as well, so I'm sure you guys will get to meet her. And we, I mean, I grew up speaking English. Uh, I don't speak another language, unfortunately, but I am trying to learn Italian, which is very difficult. <laughs> but, you know, we're very uh, open-minded trainers and both of us have traveled all over the world. But again, we're just both native English speakers here in Southern Italy. And then in Italy, we don't have the same costs as the UK as England, so we can assure our teachers that come, our visitors, that we have a high quality of life, thanks to good food, good weather, the sea, nature, sandy beaches, a healthy, active lifestyle, and then, of course, the food. And we also make it easier to reach us because we are members of the EU. And then what is this course? What are the elements of this course? We combined business and then it's focused on improving technical English for teachers or trainers who have to address new ways of communicating to students. So our focus is students, but it also is a really good way to connect and communicate with colleagues, with other teachers, other trainers, other people that are from all over the world, all over the EU, because we work with teachers from the EU. So we always have international people here in Silverato, which is a very good perk of working here and then also coming here to visit and take a course with us. So I just wanted to mention the learning goals of this course, which are, there are quite a few because it is, we do want to capture a lot of the, a lot of the elements of business in English, but the main goals are to strengthen your general knowledge on business English. And then as we go along, creating an English glossary that you can refer back to all the time in improving English communication, technical and business English skills. And then also we want, we do um, hands-on experience exercises. We like to spend some time outside on the terrace, weather permitting, of course. 
And we will write a CV, a curriculum, a business plan, and then other business techniques. Uh, later this week, I'm focusing on starting a business with my course. So we're gonna go through how to start a business and some easy steps to get started. And then also we're speaking, writing, and reading English every step of the way to integrate business and English. And then we're also to want to get the basics about economics, business, and marketing, because those are all very important aspects of business English. And then create awareness about the European projects, funding opportunities, and how to develop new business and project ideas. So just lastly, to say that the main focus of this course is to teach business English in an ever-changing world. We live in a very fast-paced environment. Not so much here in Calabria, Southern Italy, we like our, our slow pace, but the reality is, is that everything is always changing and it's changing fast. So the focus we have is to, is understanding how to clearly and effectively communicate while remaining adaptable and always staying flexible. If you guys have any questions, you can put them in the chat or send me an email and I thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thanks, Alessia. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley, for this overview. And yeah, we remind everybody, um, all the participants, that whenever you want to comment or uh, participate with any question, you can write in the chat so we can read your comment or question, or you can um, <laughs> put your hands up uh, with the tool that we have here in Zoom, and we will um, then speak with you and so we want to take advantage to interact with one of the participants who is uh, here we have a great uh, teacher from uh, Greece um, he participated in our previous training and his uh, presence was uh, so relevant during that week uh, because of the, the the energy and because uh, he was able to engage all the participants of, of the week. You will uh, now discover why. Michalis from Greece, welcome. Hello, hello everybody. Hello, hello. how are you? Yes, uh, Alessia, you together we make the program uh, the Mentoring and coaching, uh, the, the, the first program in uh, Soverato and uh, in Campus Soverato. And the second program, the second topic is, uh, uh, if, as you know, it's the uh, entrepreneurship, financial education, building sustainability from uh, schools of the labor market. Mm -hmm. My experience is it's very, very, very uh, important. Uh, the schedule of uh, lectures as uh, we had received from our pre-booking. And uh, the second, the second program, I learned new words related to entrepreneurship and the new habits in the circular economy and business. I learned English glossary, business techniques, and how to build a new business from the ground. Uh, we make the program; it's very, very good for me. And uh, I hope to come back to Soverato for the third uh, time. And uh, it's uh, very, very important. To learn new people, uh, to meet new people, and uh, from this, the le lessons in the Soverato, and uh, make a relationship with other schools in Lithuania, in the other countries in the EU, in Europe, and we make relationship with our schools, and the, this results uh, making the, our school from mentoring and teaching and the entrepreneurship uh, how to learn the, the students or these programs and. Uh, Learning the, our local society, it's very, very important for us and the teachers. Thank you, thank you very much, Jump. And uh, now I am a Jumper Ambassador. And I will come back into Soverato. We are looking forward yeah, to sorry, you sorry, let you go. One moment, please. One moment, please. And the schedule, the schedule, the Batolato, we make two twice uh, the Greek dances folklore and the Sirtaki. <laughs> Uh, with uh, our uh, colleagues, or from these uh, countries, uh, Lithuania, uh, uh, Spain, I think, uh, every country and the, all the programs in the Soverato. As I will come to see the programs, the legends in the 
uh, coaching and mentoring, and if, of course, uh, the entrepreneurship uh, in the European financial education. Thank you for all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mikhail. Uh, I, I am uh, sorry. Sorry, uh, I am uh, Mikhail Vasilides for the uh, are the uh, the people. I am Vasilides Mikhailis from Northeast Greece, Northeast Greece, Sapes, uh, and I'm, uh, I am a principal in my school, Genico Likio de Apolitiki Sekpedris, it's in their Kutula school, and thank you for all. Yes, I would like to add to the people who are connected that, of course, we invited Mikhail to be our ambassador because you, you listen that he's a pure energy man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, when Mikhail came the first time, he attended the course on coaching and mentoring with uh, Alessia. It was quite a long time ago. Then he came back and he did it, of course, developing, implementing a Key Action One uh, project. Furthermore, when he was here, uh, he met uh, teachers, colleague. Uh, from Lithuania so afterwards they connected and what we did together yes. was to connect people so they develop other kind of projects uh, the school of Mikhail is also was also in the key action two project between schools among schools and they on ecology and sustainability and they developed an application I remember yes. that I downloaded this application and they the students learn uh, what does it mean to to check the quality of uh, the air, the pollution in the air. And um, furthermore, this year, uh, because when we met people, we like to develop relationship and friendship and um, it, it always depends on the type of people, of course, because the empathy, the friendship, you do it also uh, because you feel to do it. And uh, we are Italians, I see. We are people in the South, yeah. South, so we like to be warm and welcoming all the time. Uh, this year in particular, I was saying, uh, we are developing in parallel another project uh, connecting Mikhail, Mikhail School, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mustafa, uh, you should uh, mute. Wait, okay. I yes. did it for you. Uh, and another school in Slovakia. Uh, we are developing a key action to project a small scale. So mm -hmm. um, what is very nice uh, is that uh, when developing Erasmus project, uh, you you can have a lot of ideas and it's not just the training you are attending or the job shadowing or the uh, school exchange between students, but also uh, go farther. Uh, when Mikhail came, uh, we learned about entrepreneurship, financial education, business English, uh, the trainer, Catherine Perry, who is part of our staff, uh, um, uh, connected him with other people and so we developed this kind of critical thinking and uh, creative thinking uh, between us it's not just that we give a training but we also uh, receive a lot from the people at the human level we share our culture and Mikhail is also a, a championship a master in Greek dances so <laughs> he was here, we danced and we learned Sirtaki and we were dancing uh, during the last uh, day uh, oh, after the yes. dinner. Uh, we had after a the dinner in the Badolato. In Badolato, which is a small village. We always visit a small village at the end of the week. So we enrich our programs with cultural moments. Uh, every week is different. Every week there are people from different countries. Uh, and we are trying to to combine all these ingredients um, in, in in a few days because these days when when the people come here are uh, unique are days when uh, they go out from their comfort zone from their daily life you are all educators and um, you're always super busy with your families with the classes with uh, meetings and 
Mikhail is also school director. So when he came here, he was super busy at the phone, contacting people, receiving phone calls, but he was here to learn. And we learned from him a lot, a lot. Thank you, thank you very much, Erika. And uh, the 31 August, we closed this project, the schools from Finland, Norway, France, and I, our school. Uh, this uh, application, as you say, and it's very important our schools, our countries, to see the how is the aerosols in the atmosphere, aerosols 1.0, 2.5. And uh, the last uh, summer here in uh, the uh, North uh, Greece, we have many, many fires, one million, uh, many, many uh, lost in uh, this uh, summer. And uh, our uh, sensor say us uh, we have now in the flowers in the during the flowers so we have uh, many many aerosols and the atmosphere is very very bad and the government used this aerosol this uh, so, sorry this sensor to use to say the people to protect our health and uh, for us it's very very important and our school it's uh, the coordinator of this project it's a very very big project but uh, the relationship of this of uh, the our schools from Finland, from uh, Norway and uh, France, it's uh, our friends, it's our family, you know, and we can uh, make these projects and uh, to beginning in the future to make an, another uh, projects. Follow up. Can you write in the like like this the jump and exactly. the jump and with jump. Exactly. Can you write in the chat for everyone the title of the project, the, the website of your yes, school? Yes, yes, the, yes. The name of the application. Because yes, and I, I sent you in the, 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 the link. If you yes, want. right. So also maybe uh, people who are developing some project ideas, they can contact you and uh, yes. they can be... Yes, of course. Maybe, no problem. They can be inspired by this kind of best practice. Um, okay, I send the, the link of our project. Uh, we closed one project KA2 and three projects KA1, mobility of um, pro, uh, professors in our schools, teachers, sorry, teachers in our school. And uh, we are in the, we are very, very proud for our school. You also have a and good uh, Erasmus coordinator who is, is your you very much. Vice, vice director. Okay. I sent you the, the I sent you the link of uh, this project, uh, the climate change in the digital era. Very well, very very yes. useful. In this in this page we have the application. If you have no iPhone, uh, you have um, Android. Uh, Android, yes, of course, you can uh, take it in your uh, mobilities. Uh, I told, Sorry, I told your you. Mobiles. I told you I just changed mobile because I receive a good Christmas present, and I, uh, now I I have iPhone and I need Android to download your application. It's for free. Android is for free. Um, so, uh, we also have uh, as a Mikhail, just, just... Uh, yeah. another person. I just want to know if Alina, uh, because when I'm um, connected, I don't see. Uh, Alina told me she was very, very busy and maybe she has to go. Uh, I don't want to keep your time because you connected very last minute and I thank you so much. Erika, one moment, I say you something new for you. Now you're talking with a new school, uh, in the second school in Xanthi. If you know the second school of Xanthi, uh, I am a teacher in Xanthi. Xanthi is a big town. Uh, for 80 kilometers from our town, Sapes, and I'm uh, working here, there, in Xanthi, the secondary uh, school of Xanthi, if you remember. And ah, the, two schools. No, no, the second um, uh, of Xanthi, the second uh, school of Xanthi, they come to jump. Ah, okay, okay. You will you will explain me better. I didn't get very much. Yes, explain me better. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Asking Alicia, sorry, to Alina because Alina was very busy. And uh, okay. Okay, hello again. Um, can you stay? You, can you stay? I, I can stay if you already if you have already established a certain order. It's okay. 
I yes. can I can follow the sequence. It's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So the ideal now would be to give the floor to Roberta. So Alessia, you can mm -hmm. proceed. Just to okay. Know. Thank you, Mikhail and Alina, for uh, waiting. So um, we give the floor mm -hmm. to Roberta Muratore, our jump trainer, and she will introduce us to teaching Europe. The European Union is function and new priorities towards 2030. Welcome, mm -hmm. Roberta. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. I just want to share. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, while Roberta is <laughs> opening you... the presentation, uh, can you see my no not with, yet uh, you need to click on uh, okay yeah we don't see okay now we see okay so roberta i give you the floor sorry for waiting for me so um thank you for introducing me so as you know i'm roberta I'm from Sicily, from exactly from Marsala, and I've been living here in Soverato for more than six years now. Uh, so it's very nice being here and being part of the Jump Academy professional training um, because it's nice to to share and um, to give something new to um, to teachers in general. So what about our course? Our course title is Teaching Europe. So the European Union, its function and new priorities toward um, 2030. So nowadays, many teachers um, feel like that the theme of Europe cannot be implemented at school. So they believe it is another you know, autonomous uh, program, which is not that takes away precious hours needed to cover the school content, which it does not. So teaching Europe doesn't mean only to teach Europe as a subject, but it's a cross-sectoral topic connecting more than one subject, okay? Um, so um, usually we can, you know, during the course, we can answer these questions. So why is Europe important? Why does Europe play an important role? Why should you be, Europe be taught? Um, first of all, if you want to teach Europe, you need to love Europe. So you need to appreciate the principles, the values uh, Europe promotes. Um, the course starts by introducing some theoretical frameworks which in which Europe is well-defined and what the European Union is. So starting from the structure and its institutions, um, we can talk about the European countries, the countries that are part of the EFTA, um, the Schengen area, its importance, uh, then we go through the explanation of the main bodies of the European Union and the responsibilities the various institutions have, um, how the European Union works and who does what in the EU. Um, then we talk also about uh, the history of the EU. Um, we start from the first treaty for cooperation so during the 50s uh, till reaching um, the nowadays, so the, the actual uh, period. Um, I think that the most important part of the course um, is principles and values, where um, we not only you know, mention our principles and values, but we go through uh, and we deepen the, the, main, um, the main importance of what Europe is promoting. Uh, so then we uh, talk about so the, all the importance of being a European citizen and what does it mean being an active uh, European citizen. So the, um, the the figure, the main uh, the main role that us as Europeans we we have to to have in our society. 
Um, then another important part is priority and actions. So the commissions has established to foster cooperation in building best practices in the field of education and training. So, and then also about the benefits of why studying Europe. So why Europe has to be implemented as school. Uh, this is um, something very actual and we can find it in the Green Deal, in the Agenda 2030, in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals promoted by the United Nations. And then we cannot forget to talk about the symbols. So what um, there is behind the symbols, so behind the anthem, um, behind the flag, behind our motto, which is United in Diversity. So. Is, it contains, it's like a, a motto with just three words, but it contains like a, a deep meaning behind. Um, the second part of the course um, is shape uh, on the educational uh, part. So why teaching Europe, the priority areas in education, some benefits of why studying Europe, some highlights and interest topic. And then um, we go through also uh, some um, through several online tools and practical activities that we do, teachers can improve the concept of culture um, by looking at cultures not only at the European level but at the global stage. So that's the most important thing. When we talk about Europe, when we talk about principles, values, what the European Union is doing is not only something concerning or relative to uh, something like European, it, but it's something viewed at the global stage, at the global level. Uh, we're going to go through some uh, networks and uh, some official sources that we, we can find online. And then the... We, we can say the most important part are the activities, so the practical part to let our teacher and the students as well uh, be aware of the importance of implementing Europe at school. Um, we can say that, especially here in Soverato, in Calabria, we're very lucky to have a special environment. Uh, our motto is come to Soverato where summer never ends because most of the year, uh, it's sunny even today. It's it's a bit cold for us. Maybe for you it's not cold, <laughs> um, but we have uh, we are very lucky to to do outdoor education as well uh, to be implemented as well in all our courses uh, and talk about cultures and traditions. So focus on diversity. So to talk about social and external factors that you know influence our diversity. Um, and to talk about on the importance of our identity, so who I am. So we have the time um, to be um, in outdoor, uh, very close to the seafront. I mean, we are in the seafront uh, with a nice weather and focus on ourselves as well. Uh, talk about values, beliefs as well. Uh, where do, what are these kind of values and what kind of beliefs and where these kind of beliefs come from? So um, what are you waiting for? <laughs> so we wait here, so jump with us. Um, you can find our website, probably Alessia will mention later. Um, and then if you have any questions, please text us um, to associazionejump.gmail.com uh, or you can ask us um, now on the chat. So thank you for listening to me. Um, I give you back the floor, Alessia. Thank you, Roberta. Thank, Thank you. Me. And this Thanks. is the image. I just want to say that that image is uh, uh, exactly the beach of Soverado, yeah. as uh, Roberta was exactly. saying. So this is, you can consider that this is the environment that you can find like 10 months per year. <laughs> this is not yeah. just <laughs> what you can find in uh, European summer, uh, like from June to September. You can really find this in uh, April, May, October. So um, this is the amazing aspect of the Calabria weather. So the warmth is not only in people, but also in the environment. And I can I can say this because actually I am from Rome and I go to Soverato on a regular basis. So uh, every time 
I I go there. I always consider that there is this uh, a different, uh, nicer climate. And it's an and this is a, an added value when you go on a training when you are a teacher you want to take one week uh, for yourself so you can link really the training part meeting other people exploring the the environment and visiting amazing cultural places it's um it's a very great combination of uh, learning with taking some time for myself to recharge my batteries because we all know that the, the school year requires us uh, a lot of energy and it's proven now more than ever that um, stop um, one week to recharge yourself, to reflect, to learn and to visit new places, meeting new people is also um, a very positive resource that we can use to go back to our school with a new energy regenerated a regenerated teacher we can say so it's good for our wellness too and so thank you again roberta and thank you. we have uh, alina right so we yeah sorry roberta you should stop sharing Close the presentation in Canva. Okay. Yeah, so we have another jump ambassador, right, Erika? Exactly. She's more than a uh, jump ambassador because um, during the year 2022 and 2023, we developed a series of uh, conferences and Alina proposed something that from a formal teacher impressed everyone uh, the the balance between formal and non-formal education and when she gave this presentation she uh, you know she impressed uh, all the audience so uh, what we do in our training is that to balance formal and non-formal education and this is a challenge is something we do regularly so i we invited alina to give this uh, important moment about her experience. Thank you, Erika, for uh, such a nice uh, presentation. In fact, uh, it's only the result of my own uh, documentation and uh, my practice. Thank you for uh, all the wonderful opportunities to be part of your conference uh, organized by um, Associazione Jump. And of course, uh, for um, being I hope uh, available participant um, uh, EU art, read and art uh, training course, uh, which led me to a lot of uh, conclusions uh, on the theme of um, the importance of reading, also from non-formal point of view. Uh, if you have, um, if you have plenty of time to to present. Um, my perspective on non-formal education, on the importance uh, of a proper balance between formal and non-formal education, I will um, suggest you, first of all, um, short uh, a short video. Uh, Erika, if uh, there is time for this, if not, How, uh, I could, yeah, um, you can start to. We can start to watch it. The, of course, uh, some right. depends how long is it. Hello, all you beautiful beings there. Today, let me tell you the eagle's story. The eagle is a majestic creature with a lifespan of up to 70 years. The eagle, a truly magnificent and powerful creature, faces a turning point in its life at the age of 40. Its long and flexible talons, once able to easily grasp prey for sustenance, can no longer fulfill this task. The once sharp beak is now bent and dull, and its wings, heavy with thick feathers, struggle to lift it off the ground. But the eagle is not one to give up. It knows that in order to survive and thrive, it must undergo a transformative process. This process, though painful, is necessary for the eagle to reclaim its strength and vitality. 
At this point, the ego has two options, die or go through a painful process of change. And as majestic as it is, the ego embraces the change rather than give up. This process of transformation is quite long, takes many days, maybe months, but the eagle perseveres. During this time, the eagle flies to the top of a mountain in its nest. It then knocks its beak against a rock until it plucks it out and waits for a new beak to grow back. The eagle then plucks out its talons, and when they grow back, it plucks out its old, aged feathers. After this process, the eagle takes its famous flight of rebirth and lives for another 30 years. We too can learn from the eagle's example. As we navigate our own journey through life, we may encounter challenges and setbacks. Change is necessary to survive and to live. We too must sometimes go through a process of change, getting rid of old memories, negative habits, and fixed mindsets. Only by freeing ourselves from the past can we take advantage of the present. If an eagle can make a life-saving and life-changing decision at the age of 40, why can't we? In order to embark on a new journey, let go of your negative, limiting beliefs and open your mind to new possibilities. By embracing change and letting go of negative beliefs and habits, we can emerge stronger and more resilient. Just as the eagle found the courage and determination to undergo its transformative process, we too can find the strength to overcome any obstacle and reach for the stars. Do you know? When it rains, all birds occupy shelter. But the eagle avoids the rain by flying above the clouds. The problem is common to all but the attitude to solve it makes the difference. So my lovely friends out there, like the eagle, don't be afraid of change. Embrace it great. All right, now hoping that you like the video, uh, you can um, take some, um, some seconds, in fact, uh, a few seconds uh, to wonder uh, that you, you, um, you, you could um, take uh, a few seconds uh, to ask yourself, have you ever felt like the eagle to wonder this? So you can write in the chat box if you want, if you have ever felt like this um, miraculous, this wonderful bird, the eagle, that uh, at the age of 40, in fact, confronts uh, itself, himself, herself with uh, a dilemma to um, accept isolation in order to develop uh, new competences, new qualities, or to die. So, many times, Alicia, but thank you. Why, um, why have, why have chosen this uh, movie, this um, uh, this video? Because I find it very suggestive um, on this topic of everyday life of a teacher to choose the type of, of uh, conveying our contents in the same time respecting uh, the the. Um, the frame, the framework of our curriculum. Um, in fact, um, what uh, um, what I have discovered, uh, not really lately, uh, let's say in the last, in the latest uh, ten years, is um, is that, um, of course, in this uh, context, uh, this context of my um, participating in uh, a few training courses um, uh, organized in this European um, framework, beginning with uh, 2012, in fact, up to present. Uh, the, the most recent training course I've attended is um, one developed in Bilbao on entrepreneurship, on cultural entrepreneurship, in fact. But um, coming back to my allegory 
of the eagle of the actual and the nowadays teacher that uh, confronts himself herself with uh, this dilemma um, to keep uh, the old track of um, of a professional approach on teaching um, but um, uh, most uh, most of the times uh, restrictive uh, keeping it uh, the, keeping the restrictive way or uh, to become um, wider to, to develop a wider view on um, teaching re uh, having having or taking into account having in mind the new theories uh, on education for instance because um, from the point of view of this uh, old restrictive professionalism professionalism uh, we have to um, recognize that uh, the teacher uh, goes on having a high level of competence uh, in the classroom, being centered on the student interested in his own development, but um, um, he, she doesn't uh, succeed, uh, doesn't always succeed in analyzing the, the educational activity in the broader context of uh, a school. Uh, for instance, uh, including the community, the society, the local and the European community, uh, why not the global community, uh, starting from the motto, uh, think global and act local. So, um, of course, um, uh, after um, I have read uh, some, some books on this uh, topic, um, from this point of view, uh, we have we have um, some references at the end of the presentation, if you are interested. For instance, uh, Philip Hall Coombs with uh, La Crisis Mundial de la Educación, or um, Antonio Colon Cañellas, Continuidad y Complementaridad entre la Educación Formal y No Formal. Um, in fact, um, I think that. Um, I've recently become a fan of this uh, second uh, paradigm of extensive professional, professionalism. Professionalism, why? Because uh, it really succeeds in um, giving every student, every student coming from social different backgrounds, opportunities to be informed um, and uh, getting valuable experiences. Um, the, the modern teacher um, fan of this uh, second paradigm is always concerned with the connection between theory and practice, um, being consistent uh, in adhering to certain theories regarding curriculum management, and of course, being always interested in uh, joining, being, being part of uh, all types uh, of training courses on uh, current uh, topics. Um, um, as I've already mentioned, uh, reading from all kinds of perspective, um, developing the, the competence of reading, of writing, uh, creative thinking, um, um, creative thinking, critical thinking, cultural entrepreneurship, and uh, so on. And now I think um, it, it would then be useless, uh, useless to, to remember what, which is the difference between formal and non-formal learning, formal and yeah. non-formal. Yeah. Yes, Sorry everybody. to interrupt. Can you open the presentation, like uh, clicking presentare, so uh, bigger? Okay. Yeah, like uh, like Roberta did exactly. Up, it's... I've already chosen the, yeah. the first one. Oh, you have to click now the purple exactly. Oh. Now it will be thought... here. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, no. oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you for my eyes. <laughs> I'm getting older. <laughs> no, no, no. It's my case too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can go. On. Okay. So coming back, um, uh, we have to. Um, to remember that every human being learns in different contexts. 
at school, at home, in the group of friends through play work, through interaction with others. In other words, we can learn in any context, in any situation, and, uh, at any active moment. Um, now, um, because we value this balance, formal, non formal, and informal, of course, learning about ourselves, um, learning about ourselves and life, we have to, um, to review a little this um, diagram. Um, or, although I'm, uh, uh, I'm aware that uh, um, you have uh, connections with uh, uh, these theories already, but um, uh, I have to put uh, this theory in our national background. So according to our national education law, number one on 2011, learning in non-formal context is considered a form of integrated learning within planned activities with learning objectives which do not explicitly follow a curriculum and may differ in duration. This type of learning depends on the intention of the learner and does not automatically lead to the certification of acquired knowledge and skills. Competencies and activities attitudes developed to students in non-formal learning include interpersonal skills, team work ability, self-confidence, discipline, responsibility, planning, coordination, and organization project management skills, ability to solve practical problems, etc. Since these skills have increased their relevance, it's about, of course, uh, non-academic or non-cognitive competencies. Contributing equally to active participation in society and the labor market, they, these skills, um, these uh, non-cognitive skills, are complementary to, to those acquired through formal education. So these methods are very different from the pedagogy used in our formal education, but in uh, the case in, of non-formal education, the emphasis is on learning by doing. Learning by doing, learning from our peers, and of course, volunteering. In our national regulating documents, there is a normative framework that regulates learning and the recognition of learning outcomes in non-formal and informal context educational school, extracurricular activities like the Erasmus Plus program, different school programs, successful partnerships, national extracurricular competitions such as, and the subchapter dedicating to, dedicated to palaces and children's clubs. In my approach, I feel supported by the non-formal education model translated into practice with, I think, an undeniable impact. Um, coming back to Coombs, non-formal education and informal education in industrialized countries are meant to compensate the deficiency and, um, and I would emphasize the, this idea, non-formal and informal education are meant to compensate over the deficiencies in the formal educational system in order to satisfy improving and enriching the quality of life, improving and enriching the quality of free time, labor mobility, converting non-employable persons into employable persons, and of course, upskilling for productivity or continuous updating. Uh, I would uh, offer you some examples of uh, non-formal activities. Um, one of these would be our workshop called the Brave Mouse. The Brave Mouse is in fact um, an Amerindian story. Uh, again, a story based um, on uh, a certain narrative, metamorphosis uh, of a mouse into a bold eagle. Uh, listening to the story, our students try to discover between the masks connections with their real life. In fact, they um, reconstituted, they uh, remade the story step by step. And uh, in the end of the activity, they reflected using SWOT sheets 
to discover a series of competences or qualities necessary to shape their future career. Values, knowledge, competences. If you are willing, you can take a look uh, at our um, video on Animoto. Uh, another example is um, our activity, our workshop uh, uh, focused on uh, cultural stereotypes, integrating the non-formal non -formal exercise called Planet Albatross. In fact, uh, you can see here in these two images, uh, an original image um, is it's about a photo taken uh, during uh, our training course in Germany, um, a training course uh, focused on inclusion and uh, cultural di diversity. Um, uh, he uh, here you can uh, see our uh, facilitators. And uh, here below, um, in fact, we, we, I think, succeeded in uh, replicating this exercise. Um, uh, in, uh, in a few words, uh, this uh, um, type uh, of intercultural communication uh, exercise learned from uh, the Erasmus Plus course, as I've already said, uh, the students understood the importance of reflecting on cultural stereotypes, biased judgments, cultural symbols, on the temptation to judge by appearances, because uh, here we have two roles, uh, one of, um, of a woman um, that, uh, <laughs> apparent, that apparently should obey the man, should uh, obey uh, the man's commands, but um, what um, what we have discovered uh, was um, that uh, we are so tempted to judge in, um, to judge the reality using our own uh, criteria uh, most of the times uh, so, so limited um, so we in fact, uh, we questioned uh, this temptation to judge by appearances dictated uh, by belonging to the culture of origin. Uh, at a certain moment, uh, the woman was uh, compelled to, to knee and uh, to eat from a jar and just like a dog. And um, we have understood that um, cultural stereotypes because in fact, uh, uh, these were behaviors specific to um, a certain, to a special planet uh, called albatross. And uh, these gestures only apparently were uh, minimizing the woman. In fact, uh, the connection between uh, the gender, the female gender and uh, the earth was meant to eliminate, um, to nurture, to nurture her energy. Uh, for instance, Alina. Uh, yes. Sorry, but um, uh, we are. I mean, at time limit. Uh, yes. Yes. Of course. Our, our will, webinars uh, are uh, one hour, very quick, and um, very really sorry to, to interrupt. This was the follow up. Mm -hmm. This uh, was another activity uh, focused on volunteering. Here you can. You can see how we exercise our sense of initiative and entrepreneurship competence. Um, we've um, um, succeed to collect some money, some funds, and after that, we donated uh, to a local vulnerable uh, group. Um, another volunteering activity, outdoor learning activities because uh, as you already uh, remember, I think um, outdoor, um, outdoor learning is, uh, is an, nowadays is an, is, an actual, uh, is an actual tendency in education. Although it's an umbrella term for actively inclusive facilitating approaches. Uh, in fact, um, outdoor learning uh, in, includes all the types of activities, experiences and experiences uh, 
uh, in the outdoors uh, that are developed outdoors, leading to learning, increased health and well-being, and of course, environmental awareness. The term is both a celebration of the long-standing attitude within the field to working with participants, as well as a call to continue to reach out more members of our communities. Here you can see some excerpts of our activities. Tower, Babel Tower. Uh, Babel, Babel Tower is based on Mission Impossible model, of course, followed up uh, by reflection. Uh, again, uh, step, uh, step forward. Uh, based on artificial scenarios, exercising our um, diversity competencies. Um, reading outside, using natural elements of our garden. And of course, uh, in the end of this presentation, I would, uh, um, I, I would uh, add that uh, the positive impacts of outdoor learning are undeniable in terms of academic achievement, personal and social development, increased well-being and mental health, and of course, care for the environment. Here you can uh, take a look at uh, six uh, of my references. And of course, these are my uh, contact information. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks so much, Alina. So now to close, Alessia, speaking about the next uh, appointments. Uh... Yes. So uh, thanks you, thank you for your, participant, for your participation today. And next appointment is tomorrow, 17th of January. Topics uh, will be coaching and mentoring and European cultural heritage. We are going to have a um, an, an trainer uh, coming from Australia. So today we had USA, Italy, and tomorrow we are going to have Australia, our Catherine Perry. And so I really invite you to be with us tomorrow for these topics. And on the 18th, we are going to speak about critical thinking and Sam STEAM stream education. Um, new frontiers for transversal and innovative schools. And also next week, we are going to be together with our webinars on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And, and uh, also the, the other week. So um, always remember to check your email because you're going to receive reminders. The time is always the same, 4 p.m. So, I mean, uh, Eric, if you can uh, yes. write. I wanted to say, if yes. someone who is connected needs something like uh, advices or some technical, uh, you know, information about Erasmus, about us, uh, I can remain online. Uh, the previous time, a Polish teacher wanted to, to, to ask me something for her application or about the school. So if you want, I can leave uh, open for 10, 15 minutes, or you can also write an email and we arrange another Zoom meeting. Uh, we are here to help and support in this phase of um, project design. There are uh, schools already accredited, other schools trying for the first time, newcomers. So we don't know uh, who you, you are in in specific, but we, we are here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I, I was sharing is uh, the Jump Training Academy website. So I also posted it in the chat, uh, www.associazionejump.it. Here on the top, you can uh, browse the courses part. Just click here and you are going to see uh, more than 30 training courses uh, available and described so you um, can choose what you want to um, attend and at the same time you can contact jump to have more information and if you want to introduce these kind of topics uh, while you are designing your project and as erica said you can also remain now or in the um, contacts part you have or the contacts or where you can reach the academy. 
Exactly. For example, uh, in the chat, Kubra Girit, you wrote that you are very new and you are like uh, uh, lost. So you, you don't know how to do. If you want to stay and connect and be connected, I, I will be here. For all the other people, the appointment is tomorrow. Tomorrow, 4 p.m., same time, same link. Thank you so much. Jump ambassadors from different countries, from Latvia. We go to the north. We go mm. to the north. Great. Thank you, Vikali. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vikali, Salina, and everybody who was present. Thank you. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.